Hi there, I'm Juan Pablo. Um, Non-Spanish speakers may call me JP. I'm going to make a brief introduction to Victor's read, so I hope you like it. First, we must activate certain add-ons, for instance, the copy attributes menu from the sum, and also we should install and activate the Blender GUI add-on, which will show on the tools tab. Well, I created two different groups for the character, a high resolution group and a low resolution one. So if we link those groups, we'll see Victor in the group folder, then Victor High and Victor Low. We link them. From the Victor High, we can make a proxy from the Victor Blend Rig, which is the rig. When we have the rig selected, you see that the Blend Rig panel appears in the tools tab. And then, well, you can see that the high resolution Victor runs at 37 frames per second, which is kind of cool, while the low resolution Victor runs at 50 frames per second. Here I have an i7 computer, so well, it all depends on, on your CPU, but in overall it runs pretty well. Well, this is kind of the final version of the rig. Um, but regarding the, the user interface, this is just what I had, so we might see a lot of changes in, in, in how the, the panel behaves, and especially with the new widget features and, and all that we are doing for, for Gooseberry. Apart from that, I also have something that I, I, I want to work on, and that is um, this kind of panel that I have to update. That were from where you can select the different controllers. So this looks nice. Maybe we can think of different ways of, of adding sliders here. Um, well, those are things that we should talk with Hjalti and, and the other animators. Well, I know that maybe Pablo and Hjalti will be familiar with this panel, but for those who are not familiar, we'll see. We have first the, the Armature Layers tab. So you can enable from here all the different layers that the rig has. Then we have the uh, IKFK tab. These kind of tabs have this button that says all, so you can see all the different sliders because the, um, the tabs are, are sensible to, to selection. So if you want to override the selection, so in order to see other sliders, you can press the All button and then you have all the different IKFK sliders. Then we have, for instance, the Hinge tab. With these sliders, you kind of avoid some, some body parts to inherit rotations from other body parts. We'll see that later. Um, we have a tune tab for different tune effects like stretchy IK for the limbs, head and torso. Then in the miscellaneous tab we have the slider for the model resolution for instance. And then the muscle tab we have here a deformation extra slider which we'll see later. So let's start with the torso. First when you select the different controllers, you'll see that the rotation mode can be changed and you do that with these sliders that appear in the properties tab but later I'll put these kind of properties inside the Blendrick panel for easier access. So the torso first, let's see the IK mode. Well for this mode I created a kind of maybe fancy control style. Um, but well, if you like it, you can use it, or if you don't like it, you can use FK. So we have this torso IK control, which we can rotate, and it gives a kind of general rotation for the torso. But if you move this controller, you'll notice that this kind of cross starts to move, and that's the pivot point. So the rotation will occur where the pivot point is. Um, and also, if you scale this controller, you'll make the arc of the curvature bigger or smaller. Apart from this main controller, you also have kind of 
middle IK controllers. You have the top one also. That you can move, you can rotate. And one good thing about this IK mode with the torso is that you kind of have a double IK. So you can have an IK effect by moving the torso from the topmost controller. But if you move the, um, the hips, you also have this IK behavior. Well, one good thing about the rig is that depending on which mode you are on, the controllers appear and disappear automatically. So, for instance, if we now set the torso to FK mode, you will see that all the green controllers disappeared and these red controllers appear, which are the FK, the FK controllers. So we have Torso FK Control, which is a, a master controller that lets you make a general rotation of the torso. And also you have each different torso joint. And in FK, the hip behaves as in most other rigs, you know. But well, the main controller for making a walk cycle is this one, is Master Torso. This controller is the one that you have to use in order to make a, a walk cycle, not the hip controller called pelvis control. So another feature of FK mode is that you can move this controller to obtain a kind of tuny effect, a stretchy effect. You can also scale them. And then we have another mode for the torso, which is called inverted torso. You see this slider called Invert Torso. And then all the controllers change to a blue mode. And what is this for? Well, there are many cases where you need the hierarchy of the torso to be inverted. Like for instance, if the character is flying, you know, you would want the torso to behave the other way around. So when you move the upper part of the torso, it affects the lower part of the torso, not the other way around. So with this mode you can do a kind of fly animation um, and also you could make the character walk upside down, you know, with this mode. For instance, you make it walk like this and his body balances from top to bottom. So well, that's the inverted torso mode and each of these modes also have a snapping button which is displayed in the IKFK tab so you can snap for instance this inverted torso mode again to FK mode and then it has snapped and also the other way around well I guess that's it for the torso then for the neck the neck also behaves in IK mode, so you see, we can move things like that and we also have these middle controllers and we can also put in FK mode and you see that controllers change to these red ones, which are FK, and now you see that the head doesn't follow the neck, that's because and the head is now with the hinge property on, so if I turn off the hinge property the head will follow the neck and we can control the head with this red controller. If I put the neck back to IK, the head will also follow the neck. But with hinge turned off, we must rotate the head always with the red controller. And when hinge is on, we rotate the head with the green controller. So that's it for now for the head. Well, as when you change the mode, the controllers appear and disappear, you can override that with this layer called IKFK. This is in case you need to, to insert keyframes or something and the controller is not present at that time. Well, now we can go to the hands. First, the basic controller for, for the fingers. You can rotate these controllers, you can move them and by scaling them you curl the fingers. You may also notice that this rig, which is my Blendrick 5 prototype, has what I call uh, realistic joints. Um, that means that the bones not only rotate, but they also move, as real bones do. You see that when I rotate this, 
the finger bone not only rotates, but it also moves away from the first bone. This technique makes things look more realistic and it also helps in volume preservation. So, well, you can do whatever you want with these controllers. Move them, rotate them, scale them. And then we also have a more generic controller for performing certain actions. If we scale this controller up, the hand will like spread out like that. And if we scale them down, the hand will close. We also have this finger spread control from which you can do, well, all the basic spreading things with your fingers and if you scale it you can do this kind of cool animation and if you scale it up you kind of curl the fingers out a bit apart from all these controllers you have the fingers layer if we activate the fingers layer the controllers for each joint appear so you can kind of tweak whatever you want and well by default the fingers are in fk mode but they also have an ik mode here are the sliders you can turn ik for each finger manually and you see that this green controller appears and now we are in IK mode or you can set this slider to one this all finger IK left slider and all the fingers will be in IK mode well IK mode is an interesting mode for certain animations and we also have a hinge effect for the fingers and what does this hinge do well, with the hinge for the fingers, you can do a kind of walking finger animation. I activated hinge for all the fingers here with this slider. And then if I move the, the hand, you see that the fingers stay in place. So you can do a fancy finger walking animation, for instance. Well, I guess that's it for hands. Now we're going to see the arms. Well, we have IK mode for the arm. So you can move the hand, you also have the shoulder controller that you can move around. And well, one thing you should know is that you can feel free to scale any controllers. For instance, we can scale the hand, we can scale the, the fingers. And we have in this body extra slayer controllers called forearm IK and arm IK, which can be scaled and the arm stretches. Well in the hinge tab you also have the hinge property for the hand and when you turn this property off the hand will follow the arm in IK otherwise it won't. So you move the arm with the hand IK controller but you rotate the hand with the hand FK controller that appears here. And well also we have this controller called palm bend IK which will let you tweak the wrist of the character so you can if the character is for example grabbing something you can kind of control how the wrist behaves independently from the the position of the hand then we also have a hinge for the arm as you can see here so you can move around the torso and the hand will stay in place another cool control we have is a kind of pivot point for the hand so for instance imagine that the character has his hand on a table and so if the table is around here and you want the character to rotate the hand over the table you can move this controller called hand IK pivot point to whatever you want and if you rotate it the hand will rotate from that place well you can also put the the arm in fk and in fk it is always a good idea to also disable the hinge for the hand and also you have the the snapping buttons and here with these controllers that are in, bo in body extras you can move the sleeve and well i i guess that that's it for for the arms oh well i, I was forgetting well we have the master controller 
and actually all these sliders are properties that are placed in these bones. This properties bone has generic properties and you can also see all the different body parts properties in these other bones just in case you want to know where the properties are. So now about the legs well in IK mode you can move them around um, you had a pole of course you can scale the IK's controller to stretch the leg and the foot rotation the foot roll can rotate the foot up to the top in case you need to do something like that with these middle controllers you kind of control this last rotation and you also have these controllers for the IKs for the toes and also you can you have a controller for the foot itself apart from from the for the sole this one you can move around and also rotate it and with the foot roll controller you can also like move the ankle if you rotate it in other axis well here we also have the cuff controllers just as the sleeves well then you can put the legs in FK mode and the feet too so you can move now with these red controllers in FK mode of course you can also snap FK to IK but IK to FK is not perfect but well the snapping just just helps a bit and well we also have this controller called thigh rod which can help you kind of tweak the deformation over there and the shoulders also can also rotate like this uh, I, f I forgot this one the sole controller also has a pivoting point so you can move the pivot point to another place and kind of rotate the foot from there and the master torso also has that kind of behavior so you can move the master torso but if you move this little guy called master torso pivot point you can make the character rotate from another place you know so I'll now show you the more fun controllers those are the tune controllers so we activate the tune layer and you see that we can kind of do this tuny deformation and what one cool thing about this is that these controllers not only move but they also rotate and I'll show you this and by rotating you're kind of modifying the bezier curve of the b-bones like this so you can kind of tweak the deformation a lot with that and these controllers also can also scale and will make things like fatter you know you can do all kind of, of effects with this you can move things around you can totally deform this guy there's also another layer called scale in this layer these cube controllers appear and what these controllers do is to perform a kind of uniform scale to the body part so we have an arm scale we have an, a leg scale you see it's a uniform scale it kind of makes everything bigger and also a head scale well and everything becomes becomes bigger and with all this the IK mechanisms are still working you know so you can do lots of things with these controllers we also have the tune controllers for the head from where you can do like rubbery deformations this is a kind of rubbery deformation achieved with lattices but later I will show you another way of deforming the character's face well then as I showed you there is a tune tab in this tune tab we can set the controllers to have stretchy IK so we can activate stretchy IK for the torso so if we move the torso controller it will stretch and activate for the arm so if we move the IK controller of, of the arm the arm will stretch and the same with the legs and the same with the head 
so well. There are many different modes that you can choose from to make your animation workflow easier. We also have the, the look controller. As you can see, the eyes behave kind of fleshy, with a fleshy deformation when the character moves his eyes around. And this controller, by default, follows the head. So if the character moves the head, the controller will move with the head, and the eyes will always be looking where the head is pointing. But in the miscellaneous tab, we have this look slider and we can set it to for example torso and with torso this look controller will follow the torso and not the head so now if I rotate the head you see that the controller doesn't move so the character keeps looking at one place while moving the head you can also set it to body and with that one with body you can move the whole character and the controller stays in place but the controller follows the master bone and then if you set it to free the controller will not follow the master bone either so the look controller is totally free from the character that's in case for example if the character is walking around and you want to keep the character looking at a tree for instance so you can make him walk around and his eyes will follow the tree, you know? Well, inside these eyes controllers, we also have some other controllers for the eyes themselves. This is a master controller, but you can also move the eyes independently. And with these yellow controllers, you can move the eyes out of place. You can scale them. And these rounded controllers, by scaling this controller, you modify the size of the iris and with this other controller you modify the size of the pupil and as you can notice when I do this the eye always stays rounded you know finally we have a layer called extras in which we have a kind of another controller it's like just like another pivot point for for a kind of master controller you know and we also had the floor controllers and these floor controllers come in handy when for instance the terrain is irregular so you can set the floor to the height you want and they will act as a limit for the character's floor without having to worry about how the soul controller is animated so it's an automatic way of limiting the steps of the character in this layer we also have this controller which is hand accessory and we have another controller called accessory um, if you want the character to hold something you should parent it to accessory and then the hand accessory will move along with the hand and in the miscellaneous step you can move the accessory from one hand to the other you see that the accessory is in the right hand now or you can make it totally free and the accessory won't move along with the hands anymore. There is also an add-on called Dynamic Parenting, which is really good, but I think that it's not working currently, so it would be cool to, to, to fix that, you know? Because um, it could well replace all these accessory things with a much better solution, you know? Well, we're almost finished with the body controllers. Now we're going to see... We have a breathing controller so that you can do this breathing effect and you also have this kind of lattice deformation just extra deformation if you want to use it for the chest and for the, his rare parts you know well now finally the jacket as you see when i move the torso, the jacket always follows the movement of the body but with these extra controllers called jacket front, side and back you can move the jacket separately so we have this controller, you know, you can open the jacket you have to take into account that these controllers are spline IK controllers so you kind of have the controllers at the end of each spline you know and then you have to think of the rest of the controllers as a kind of 
dynamic collision point you know you see here you can well simulate like when the character is putting his hands into his pocket you know you kind of can simulate the point of contact between the hand and the jacket and as this is spline IK, each controller also controls the Bezier handles. So if you scale them or rotate them, you have an extra deformation. So think of it as if you were editing a spline. You know, you see, you can do whatever you want with this. It, it's really cool. And we also have this controller called Jacket Bottom Control, which kind of lets you move this as a whole, you know. So you can move them, you can rotate them also. You can rotate this for like opening the jacket, you know. So well, I think that it turned out to be a really flexible rig for the jacket. I hope it's up to the task. Well, and finally, the face rig. Well, first of all, this rig is a bone-based rig. So it is much more flexible than a, than a shape key based rig. Let me show you. This is the actual rig. And this, all these B-bones deform the face in a very cool way. And I only, and I only use some corrected, corrective shape keys for, for certain deformations. The good thing about this is that you are kind of free to do whatever you want. You are not limited by the shape keys that the rear or modeler might have thought of so you have the eyebrows you can move them you can scale them you can rotate them with this general controller and you can also kind of control each part individually also as well as with the with the tune controllers in the eyebrows if you rotate them you kind of tweak the bezier curve of the b-bone and you can do that in the eyebrows but also in the eyelids and in the mouth and in the lips now we have the basic controllers for the eyes as you can notice the eyes have automatic collision detection for the eyelids you can rotate this one this guy whatever and you can do whatever you want to to tweak the deformation with this general controller and the collision detection works really well well then we have some more expression controllers the nose you can also scale the nose and do whatever you want with the face actually you can deform it as you want and then we have the cheeks and then before i go to the mouth i'll show you the other way of deforming the the head in this facial layer we have this controller which is called head stretch that would stretch the head and we have some other controllers that will let you kind of articulate the head itself um, with different joints and this will articulate the head like um, with a bone mechanism not with a lattice mechanism which which makes deformation kind of more controllable you know so you have this one we have head top controller so you can kind of do this kind of deformation we also have this one so you can rotate there are very subtle movements that the animators do with this kind of controllers which are really cool then we have well this middle controller then we also have this controller that will let you like squash everything and as you see the bones are actually deforming here it's not a lattice deformation, it's a mechanism deformation. It is much more reliable, you know. We had that one, then we also have the mouth stretch. So, you know, when the character can be talking or something like that, and then you can deform things, you can deform the jaw, you know. These are really cool tomb deformations for facial expression. And then, well, we also have the, uh, the ears, with two articulation points we also have the jaw you can also scale it and do whatever you want um, and you can also scale these these guys also and well now the the mouth this rig has a now is kind of oriented to to speaking so 
you have this controller which is called mouth control and by moving it in circles you can make all the vowels of the character so we can move it down we can move it up to the side and the mouth will widen and then to the other side the mouth will go to kind of a new or an O vowel you know this is all automatic and you can see the bones there doing that then and then you can also rotate it to make to make him smile or to make him sad you know that's the basic control of the mouth and no matter what you do with this controller you can also you can always tweak the mouth corner however you want so you can have any kind of, of, of deformation that you need now that you see that I'm moving this mouth control this mouth corner controller and the teeth kind of follow the movement well in the tune tab we have these sliders follow smile teeth upper and teeth lower and with these sliders you can set how much the teeth will follow the the smile you know so if you put it in one the teeth will follow the movement of the corner of the mouth and give it a much more like tuny feeling if you move these ones in X the mouth will become thinner you can kind of shrink the mouth but without making the U vowel you can see that the, uh, the feeling of the face is like very organic when you open the mouth the nose also moves a bit so that's kind of cool another thing I did was to add let me hide the hair now in the muscle system tab we have this slider called deformation extras if you set it on you will enable a dynamic smoothing modifier that will kind of smooth out critical areas in extreme positions of the of the face so let me activate it and you see the difference this will avoid creases in the in the mesh so it's kind of cool it will always be on for rendering so you don't have to worry i just have the option to enable it or disable it here but just for the viewport and um, in case the animator wants to see what the render will look like finally because the render will be with this deformation extras activated so with this deformation extras thing you can move the things to very extreme positions without intersections of the mesh or anything like that um now see that when he smiles the cheeks also move so that's cool and then if you make the u vowel you can turn it off by moving these two controllers back you know there we cancelled the u thing and if you move them back even further the lips of the character will kind of go like that we go into the mouth I think that you can create any expression that you want in the character and that's another one the last one this one if you put the the mouth corner there you can scale it up and you have that kind of cheek puff effect like that you can always move the jaw and the things will keep working and we also have these two controllers that I call that are called mouth up rotation and mouth low rotation that will let you kind of move the mouth to wherever you want so and you can rotate them and this will and if you tuck the character will all the mechanisms will keep on working you know but with the mouth rotated you can do lots of expressions this way and well then we have facial extras one with these controllers you can tweak things even further here we have the lip controllers oh the lips also have automatic collision detection for instance so you have this lip up control collision these controllers called collision will make the lips collide with each other but if you want to override that collision you have these other controllers called the same but not collision that are called lip up control and lip up control collision so lip up control if you move it you can kind of override the collision thing and you can move the the lips freely no collision there by moving that controllers um but if you move the collision one you will have automatic 
collision detection, as you see. These controllers can also rotate to have kind of automated um, expressions. So you see the collision there, we weak. So with these ones, you can also kind of rotate the leaps. And then you have this one's leap up two, that will move the upper part of the leaps. And this will move this part. Also, you can also have them here, leap low two and leap low three. So well, you can do whatever you want with this. And for the nose, we also have some other controllers. You can tweak things as you want, as you need. So well, as you see, you can totally deform the character. Then, as I said, you have the eyelids. So here you can move the eyelids and override the, the default movements that the eyelid controllers give. And then we have like a totally extreme layer that's called Facial Extras 2 that will actually show you each, each point of articulation of the rig, so you can kind of move vertex by vertex the model, you know? It is really extreme. You will only need to, to move these ones, these controllers, if you want to make a really precise correction, you know, to the default movement of the rig. But well, you, you can do it if you need to. So then, inside the mouth, you also have some controllers for the teeth. So, let me show you. So then the teeth can also be moved and scaled if you need to and you can kind of deform them also with these other controllers and um, which can be scaled also and rotated if you need to. So you can do whatever you want with this and you also have the tongue. The tongue has a, a master back there and you can move them. You have an FK controllers and then you can do you have some like IK controllers that they will let you do they will let you move everything like in a much more organic way you see and finally we have some controllers for the hair just basic thing i did that this is a lattice actually a lattice modifier deforming the hair and this same lattice modifier may also work with the with the final particles so we could keep it and see what happens and well i think that's it have fun using the rig see you later